Hello, Donna here. In this video, we're making easy pockets for journals. And this really is an easy pocket. I've got the pattern here for you. I love making patterns and making easy pockets. I've put the link below for you to go over to my website and grab this printable. It's very easy to cut out. Once you've printed it out, you just cut it out on the black lines. It's pretty straightforward. I'll just show you something before we start. The paper. What sort of paper you use to make this pocket will make a difference. This one here, I've used a very light paper. Now I've used a light paper for this because it's got an expandable gusset in the side. You can call it Constantina, you can call it a gusset, you can call it expandable. But what it is, is just an extra little piece of folded paper and I've used the same paper as I've made the pocket. So this is a, a wrapping paper that I've got a whole big roll of and I've just cut it down and used this, which is already aged. I've had this paper for about 30 years. So it's perfect. So looking at it here, it's around about 100 GSM. So it's not overly heavy. I wouldn't use anything lighter than 100, 100 GSM. If you wanted to use everyday copy paper, like tea dyed paper is about 80 GSM, you could just know that it's going to be thin. There's also your craft paper. This one here is 176 GSM. So this one here is the one I'm going to use today, 176 GSM. It's not overly heavy and it's not overly light. So this is a premium card stock. This is a letter size, eight and a half inch by 11 inch. So that's what I'm going to use today. And I'm going to use some vintage French newspaper to decorate it. This one here, I've just decorated it with stamps because I am putting my faux stamps. These are blank faux stamps. I'm just going to pop those in there. So these blank stamps are available also in my website shop. So these little pockets are perfect for things like this. So I've got a bit of variety here. I've also used this marble paper and I've shaped the top a little bit different. So you can go ahead and shape it however you like. I've used the matching paper for the gusset. This one is 100 GSM. So this one is perfect for it and it makes up nice and light. It's not too heavy, not too light because once you put things inside it, you don't want it to be too, too bulky. So again, I've got my faux postage stamps in there and I've used the faux postage stamps to decorate as well. This one here, I've used the same green paper on this one. It's a little bit bigger for a bigger one. And I've used some of this paper to decorate with. So I've torn a larger piece down the side there and I've fussy cut some of the birds out and put it over a, a tea dyed piece of paper on the front here. So it's quite versatile on how you do it. You can glue your sides down flat like this one it's got no gusset in it, this one. So you've got an option to put the gusset in it and have it like that or just have it laying flat if you don't want to have gusset in it. It's still going to be fine for you. Now I've got my pattern cut out. So I'm just going to stick that down into the corner and I'm just going to put a line there, a line there, a line there, a line there and I'm going to mark my center line there. This is where I'll be scoring on the craft pocket itself and folding it in half and I use my square ruler to cut out the pocket. 
I'm just going to lay the, the pocket on my scoreboard and make sure that my center mark is right there on one of the score lines. And I'm just going to score that straight down the center. I'm not going to score it too heavy because this paper is not, or, or it's light cardstock. It's heavier than a paper, lighter than a cardstock. So then I'm just going to fold that over, make sure my corners match and crease it down that score line. I use my bone folder to make sure it's nicely creased. Pretty easy so far. Right, I've got my corner punch. That is optional. You don't have to round the corners, but I've rounded the corners. It looks quite good. But if you wanted a, a square look, that is entirely up to you to see what finish you want. So I'll pop that in my punch and round those corners. So now I've got that piece there and I've got my leftover piece. I'm going to cut two of these. So I'm going to have to go that way. So I'm going to cut them out together. So I'm just going to fold that over so I can cut two pieces at once. I'm going to pop that pattern piece on there and mark it around and cut that out. You don't need to mark all of these score lines and I'll, I'll show you why. Making sure your pieces don't move. Okay, so now I've got my two expandable sides. I'm going to bring the scoreboard back in and because these are 10 millimeters wide, these little markers here, there are 10 millimeter wide or one centimeter markers on my scoreboard. So I don't really need to worry too much about transferring those marks onto here because I can use the scoreboard. I have got this pattern in inches as well. So we need to score two of these. So I'm going to put this on that straight line there and that straight line there. And I'm just going to go to the center and I'm going to score very gently down that center line. Then I'm going to turn it over and put it back on and I'm going to come to the next 10 millimeter line and I'm going to score there. And the same to the left of that center line, just score it on 10 millimeters. So you can see that there's a a different score line. One is up one way and one is up the other because I've turned it around. And that is because we're going to have one folded that way and then these two folded the other way. So we're going to end up with a, I'll put it that way so you can see it's a W. So I'll do it again. This time I'm going to do it quick. Score down the center, turn it over, and do a 10 millimeter score down either side. Then I'm going to match up those two corners again, make sure. Then I'm going to turn it around and go the opposite way because it has been scored in reverse and there we have our little gusset and it's formed a W. We've got two of them, we need two of them. Right now just to show you that that is going to be facing the inside of this little envelope or the little pocket and that one will be facing the outside. If you like to embellish a lot, this one, you know, it'll give you the option you do it now before you seal the ends. So we can start embellishing. We're only going to embellish the front. I'm going to go with some black newsprint and some birds and some 
blank stamps and some printed stamps. They're all faux stamps here. You could use real stamps as well. I think I'll put some Distress Ink down first. I'm just going to use Vintage Photo. Now with the black, I, I really want the black to be just a base to let these the newsprint to pop off the background. I'm going to get this torn down so that it's all uneven and I can cut it off the edge. So I'm sort of going for something along these lines again. I'm going to glue that down. I'm just going to use some Barely Art glue. So I'll glue that there and I'll be back in a minute. I'll just place that on, see about there. I'm going to level it at the bottom. I'm just going to trim that back to the edge of the top of the pocket and then I'll round that corner again. So I'll rip that off and I can keep that and use it elsewhere because that's a pretty cool looking ad. The thing is with this pocket is I'm showing it to you on the portrait view, but we will be looking at the pocket on the landscape view. But either way, it doesn't matter which way you decorate it because it is entirely up to you. I decide to go with the landscape look and I'll use a smaller piece of this vintage newsprint and I'm just going to put it to the right hand side here. So once I've glued it down, I just trim off the bits that are hanging over the edge of the pocket. Now when you're doing collages like this, just place your paper, have a look at where you think it might work. And if it doesn't work, don't lose sleep over it. Don't panic. Just put it there, have a look at it, take it away if it doesn't work. And grab something else. So I'm just going to finish trimming this bottom piece up here because I've decided to just keep going. You don't have to be an expert to work out where things go. Just lay it down. We've still got all these stamps to place yet. Not only stamps, have a look at whether or not you want a fussy cut. I add one of these birds to the mix as well. So I quickly cut out one of the birds and I also cut out a leaf to go with. I'm going to add these two stamps here and see what they look like. These stamps are perfect because you can actually get your favourite rubber stamps and stamp over the top of these stamps. The little brown stamp that's behind the bird, you can add a stamp to that and change it up. The idea of the blank stamps are so that you can build on them and put whatever you like there. I feel this is getting somewhere now, so I'm just going to add the word stamps. I've used a scanner cut to cut my word out, but you could also use your rubber stamp here. So I don't lose where I'm up to. I'm just going to leave my stamps laying down on the pocket and I'm just going to lift them up where they are and put a spot of glue under each stamp and then finish gluing them down after I've done that. Now this is where I add my leaf that I cut out when I fussy cut the bird. So I'm just going to glue the bird down half and half over one lot of stamp and that just brings it together and I've already glued the leaf down and when I glue the word stamp down, their individual letters, I start backwards. So this way I won't run out of paper. So if I started from the front, you know, potentially I could run out of space. So to build it up, I grab another faux postage stamp. So I'm going to go the gauze, the postage stamp and a label. You'll see there I've added a a hole reinforcer as well and it's got a couple of colours on it and I glued that there to form a part of that little cluster as well. I like putting things on an angle because it just adds a bit more interest. You don't have to have everything super straight. 
Now I'm just going to go ahead and, and take it over to my sewing machine and put some stitches on it. And I'm going to sew around the edge as well. And I'll do that because it's not finished. The pocket's not finished. I can lay it open and flat. The stitches will help join everything together. I've stitched that up. The rust on the, the coloured thread rust, it looked a bit blah on its own. So I went around it again with a dark chocolate brown. That gave it a little bit more lift. So we're ready now to glue in the expandable gussets on the edge here. So we just need to grab them and face them the right way. Put the W with the hollow facing the inside. So we're going to put some glue on the back side. So hold it like that and put some glue on that back area there. I'm just using the Barely Art glue. It grabs really quick and it dries almost instantly. So where I put it is where it's going to stay. So I'm just going to come up here. I'm not going to over glue it because if any glue goes to the inside of your pocket, it's going to glue it shut. So only glue it on that one side. Open up your pocket, line it up to the edge of the pocket almost to the fold line, close all of those folds and have it flush with the edge of the pocket here, right? And just make sure it's in place. Do the same on this one. Have the W facing with the hollow, the valley, if you like, on the inside of the pocket this way. Turn it slightly that way and put glue on the back again. Don't put it too close to the edge because if it squashes out everywhere, it's going to make a mighty mess. And if it comes into here and you do that, it's going to close your pocket and you don't want to do that. So we're just going to do the same again. Turn your pocket around so that it's easier to handle and place it right on that edge line so the that cut line of this piece here matches the cut line edge of your pocket and it's just beside that fold line there just enough so that when you close that pocket that it doesn't stop it from closing and then you just make sure it's all not sticking out anywhere it's all in there nice and snug okay and then we can just now put glue on this top piece you can always um, put a little bit of distress ink on there if you like but i'm not going to do that just yet i'll have a look at it when it's finished gluing down put glue on both sides together this time because when we glue this shut, we're going to glue it shut together. Okay. I'm going to turn it around this way or whatever way works for you when you're, when you're starting to close it. Just so you go that way and use your thumbs here and close it. Then come back and make sure your edges are matching. Turn it around. If you're using the Belly Art glue, all the art glitter glue, do that quickly because it will grab quickly and you won't be able to move it. I just had to put a thread, push one of the threads from here down into the glued area so it didn't poke out. That's my gusset glued in. That's how easy it is to put those little ex expandable sides in so if you've got some stamps and you need somewhere to put them you can now put this away in a little filing system if you've got postcards you can get your postcards and pop them in there they fit perfectly in this size pocket this can be a free floating pocket in your journal or you can put this pocket in another pocket 
you can just put it in a little filing system if you've got a nice old vintage box you can sit it in the box and have that and have a whole you know half a dozen of these or more embellish them as little or a lot as you like i'm donna thanks for watching and bye for now